Hey guys, it's Alex with the Artifact Company coming to you uh, with some pieces that we have available now uh, direct for purchase through our brokerage service. Uh, most of you will see the uh, emails that we did send out uh, regarding these. There's about 32 or 33 of these pieces. I'm going to be going over these um, items here uh, on video so you can have a chance to better see some of the flaking and, and other uh, features of some of these pieces. Uh, this this is point number one. This is a what's called a Levi uh, or a Frederick, depending on uh, the typologist that you want to use. It does have some nice grinding here in this basal area. Levi was a type that uh, Perino did uh, type in one of his first type guides years ago. This particular example is from Haskell County, Oklahoma. It's formerly of the Sterling Clayton, Lonnie Hartline, Steve Young, and John Loke collections. Uh, it is made of a gray barren fork chert. And as you can see, this piece is flaked phenomenally. Phenomenal example. And it does have a Dwayne Rogers paper as a Levi with that provenance. We papered it in 2022. And Sturmer papered it in 2023 as a Frederick. Uh, we did have some additional information there found near the town of Kinta in Haskell County. <clears throat> now, uh, this piece is consigned. The current asking price on it through the brokerage service is $3,500. If you'd like to call to talk about this piece, please do so at 1-800-466-3836 and we'll be happy to talk with you. Also, uh, any reasonable offers will be considered and taken back to the consigner. Okay, on to piece number two. Piece number two is, we're calling this a Mandan knife or a High Plains knife. It's a much more recent uh, piece from some of the, the High Plains tribes that were here uh, when Lewis and Clark were, were going through the area. This is a nice uh, semi-translucent piece of Knife River Flint. Very nicely made, does have some good proportions. It is large at it is large at 5 and 5 sixteenths of inches long. Um, some good uh, surface polish to it and some mineralization. And this piece is from Minnesota. Uh, current asking price for this, uh, obviously subject to offers, is $995. Okay. <clears throat> Number three. Give me just one second here. Number three is this very nice Midland point. Hopefully you can see the flaking in this uh, this video here. Very thin example. Does have some light grinding on the basal edges here. And it measures two and a quarter inches long. Uh, this does have a, a previous paper on it from Ken Partain. Partain typed it in Eden. Uh, we don't agree with that assessment. It is a, an Oklahoma piece, formerly of the Lewis McDaniel collection. Uh, current asking price on this piece is $4,500. Okay. And number four is we have this nice small, uh, what would be considered kind of an entry level Folsom point. Uh, it does obviously have some damage to it, and there is some agricultural damage here along this edge where a plow did shear this edge just slightly. <clears throat> this piece is from Illinois. It's made of a cream fossil chert, probably a Burlington form, uh, and it is, uh, it's available at $600.
Okay. Next we have this nice three and a quarter inch turkey tail. It's in a heavily river stained uh, shirt, probably either Fort Payne or possibly a, a hornstone. It's it's fairly fairly blackened, so it's hard to hard to get a read on what the underlying material is. It's from Trigg County, Kentucky. It's formerly of the Ron Comer collection, and it does have a Tony Putty uh, paper on it <clears throat> as a um, Tony graded it a G8 plus. But this is still a, a very nice, very nice turkey tail. Uh, we are asking 375 for this piece. Keep that in mind. The next piece is this is number six. This is a two and five eighths inch by one and five eighths inch Lost Lake. It's a nice Coshocton Flint example uh, with the, the provenance reports it as Ohio County, Indiana. It's a nice piece. It's got some nice basal grinding and you swear it's it doesn't have a very strong resharpening pattern to it if it does it's it's more on more on this edge than than typical so it may fall more to a kirk than a lost lake <clears throat> however it is a nice piece uh, asking price on this one is 9.95 next piece we have is a four and five eighths inch Woodland knife. It's made of a nice fossil laden Harrodsburg chert. <clears throat> and it is a Kentucky piece. Uh, we do have this listed for $375. And here we have this. This is a fantastic Lost Lake piece. Um, nice hornstone example out of Posey County, Indiana. This is formerly of the Johnson family collection. <clears throat> it is bifacially resharpened, so some folks may call this a, a kirk or archaic deep notch. Uh, however, we do feel it is, uh, really does feel, fall best to, to the Lost Lake uh, form. This particular example is available at 2500 Number nine is a four and a half inch long Hopewell point. Very nice large point from Ohio in Flint Ridge. See, it does have some nice, does have a nice uh, plow strike there on this edge. There are some good mineral deposits left on the surface of this Flint Ridge. Uh, if you do a lot of examinations under the microscope, Flint Ridge doesn't tend to hold a lot of minerals mostly because of, of how waxy it is uh, most times. Um, this piece is available for $500 and it does have a, an, an existing Jackson G8 uh, COA on it. Number 10. Number 10 is a just a fantastic <clears throat> Fantastic Snyder's Point from McLean County, Illinois. It's ex uh, William Cox or Bill Cox collection. Just beautiful textbook, textbook notches on this this piece. Uh, certainly, certainly a, a, a centerpiece in any any Snyder's frame with this classic classic appearance. This piece is available for eighteen fifty. Next we have this 3 and 9 16 inch pine tree. Uh, it's a near first stage example. It's only been resharpened a handful of times but, and every practically every single serration is still present on this piece. <clears throat> this was from the Sexton Farm in Bath County, Kentucky near Owingsville. 
and it's absolutely loaded with authentic mineralization, exactly what you want to see. In fact, I'm not sure that the family did more than rinse it off after they got it got it out of the field. So it still has a lot of the original field field dirt on it. The material is Brethet Chert. It's kind of a greenish tan material that is harder to work. It's a tough material. It's also fairly durable too. Um, this example, it's a G10 uh, 2750 for this piece. Number 12 is a 6 inch Adena. This was a featured lot in an old barn auction a while back as well as being pictured in <clears throat> the Chapa book, that's the Collectors of Historic and Prehistoric Art book that Bill Ballinger put out uh, after he um, sold the Who's Who, uh, and sorry, after he sold um, Prehistoric Antiquities, he started publishing those books. I think he's on volume two now. A very nice, uh, very nice example from Christian County, Kentucky, in a pretty mottled cream and tan Fort Payne shirt. This piece is available for $2,500. <clears throat> Next we have this, uh, this is number 13, this is a 4 and a 16th inch Thebes point. Uh, this, this was part of B.W. Stevens' first collection. Here is the remnant label. You can see it has a, uh, it starts with an S. However, most of the label is lost uh, to the, the rigors of, of time. Uh, <clears throat> it is pictured also on page 93 of Who's Who number one as part of um, part of his collection. There is an additional video uh, that was produced for this this particular piece that's attached to uh, the listing on the website. Um, includes a G10 Jackson paper, and the asking price on this piece is three thousand. Good chance to get a nice pictured piece from. <clears throat> from an early well-known collection. Okay, so number 14. Number 14 is a new burger point. It's found by Bill Cameron, March 7th of 1973, Fulton County, Illinois, near Copperas Creek. It says Copax Creek on here, however, there there is only a Copperas Creek in that county, so I'm sure it's just a misspelling, um, which is far more common than than people realize. It's a very nice piece made out of Burlington shirt. It is super thin, as you can tell. <clears throat> piece measures three and an eighth by one and three eighths inches, and it is available for $795. Okay, number 15. Is this very nice? Put this on the black background. This very nice Dalton point is found on the Hollis Farm in July of 1959. It's written on it in faded ballpoint pen. It says, found west of Dad's house, right there on the piece. However, we're not certain if this was uh, Missouri or Illinois. There was no more specific information on it. It is a Burlington material, as you can tell. Uh, it also has some pretty obvious mineralization that's visible in the in the video here, and it measures a full three and a half inches uh, by one and three eighths inch. Very very nice and thin, and you've got a nice nice decent little little cross section there. That piece is available for seven hundred and ninety five dollars. <clears throat> Sorry, $1,500 on the doll. My bad. Next is number 16, a Mississippian knife. This piece has got some, some pretty killer serrations on it. Uh, it's possible that this was a kind of a mini Caddo dance blade, just based on the flaking and the way these serrations are done. It's an unusual piece. This came from Yell County, Arkansas. <clears throat> there is a Jackson paper available on this piece already, uh, and uh, the asking price for this is $795. Okay, so 
Next is item 17. This is a Robbins Point from Tennessee. We're not sure what Knight's Bluff is. It's probably a local name. This says either 10 of like October of 57 or 1967. We're not sure which. We're not we do not know who EFM is. <clears throat> However, this is a uh, nice piece made out of a form of Fort Payne shirt. This is from Tennessee. Uh, and it is five inches long. And it's available for five hundred. Next, we have this base tang knife from Williamson County, Texas. My home, my home county. Uh, very nice example, very, very thin example, a little, little atypical in the base for a base tang, however it doesn't really match uh, anything else really. Um, we acquired this from the W.A. Crowther Jr. collection. It was part of a Louisville collection for many, many years, uh, having been collected sometime prior to 1920. <clears throat> this piece is available. Uh, for eighteen hundred dollars, it's four and thirteen sixteenths inches long and two and an eighth inches wide. Again, a very nice, uh, very nice, highly collectible piece. <clears throat> okay. Next is number nineteen, and this is a uh, unfluted Clovis. Uh, it's got some heavy river stain, creek staining on it. <clears throat> in Hornstone. Uh, it's from Nicholas County, Kentucky, uh, which if you're familiar with Kentucky is where Carlisle is, uh, and this is formerly from Gary Knoll. It does have some outre passe flaking present on it. There are a couple that actually do go all the way across the blade face uh, on it. Um, yeah, there's, there's one right there. <clears throat> Very nice piece. Jackson G9 paper, $9.95. Number 20. We have a 5 and 15 sixteenths, darn near 6 inch Etley, Scott County, Missouri. Just a beautiful, beautiful colored piece. You know, kind of a nice, kind of a thicker diamond cross section to it. Um, has a has a Sturmer COA on it currently and is available for twelve hundred and fifty dollars. This is a this is this is hunk of hunk of flint right here. <clears throat> Item twenty one is a four and thirteen sixteenths inch Pike County from Saint Clair County, Illinois. Very nice piece uh, in a very fine oolitic uh, or peloidal type chert. Uh, lots of small little little small round fossils help make up this material. It's from St. Clair County, Illinois, if I didn't say that before, and is available for 3000 Has a nice plow strike there. You know, just a just a well-made, just a well-made paleo piece. And we have number 22, which is a six and an eighth inch Greenbrier point. It's absolutely massive. <clears throat> Made in Burlington. It's absolutely loaded with proper mineralization in many places on the piece. And it's from Pike County, Illinois. And we're asking $2,800 for this piece. Definitely one that would have been worked down uh, considerably. Uh, had they had it much longer. All right, hold on. I will. Next is twenty three.
23 is a 3 and 5 eighths inch Alberta point. There we go. It's a 3 and 5 eighths inch Alberta point. This is a pretty rare, pretty rare type. It's a kind of a precursor to Scott's Bluff in the Northern Plains. Pretty well defined stem area. And this particular piece. does have a Roy Motley COA with it. He papered it in 2021. <clears throat> and it is also formerly of the Terry Allen collection. <clears throat> We'd like to have $995 for this piece. Just a really nice cross section, nice thin, thin piece. Number 24 is also an Alberta point. Again, well defined stem area, similar to Scotts Bluff or Eden. Uh, this piece is from Dunn County, North Dakota, formerly of the Terry Allen collection, and it also does have a um, Motley COA. This banded basalt material. This is a fissure in the stone. It is not broken and glued. Uh, a lot of people have asked that question. This is not a break. This is how the stone actually is. Good mineralization on it and a unique unique material. We're asking 750 for this piece. Well, 25 25. This piece uh, has a Rogers paper on it as an Eden from Red Willow County, Nebraska. It's formerly of the Jim Crawford collection. Uh, if you knew Jim, uh, you did know that uh, you'll note in this Mari Meadows paper on the piece that it has Jim's characteristic um, Kiwi shoe polish on it in the photo. <clears throat> It's a nice tan colored shirt material. <clears throat> and it measures 2 and 7 eighths inches long. Uh, it also has a Roy Motley COA as well, also as an Eden. We'd like to get $22.50 for this piece. Okay. second and I'll get, get to the next piece. Alright, item 26. Is this very well made Humboldt Really doesn't want to show up all that that well. Let's see if that that, help, that does help. Okay, very nicely made Humboldt uh, from um, found on Crump Lake in the 1960s by a guy named Michael Gray in Oregon. Uh, it does have some nice translucency. You can kind of see some of that banding through there, and then there's a better picture of that in the in the listing. Measures three and seven eighths by one. We'd like eighteen hundred for that particular piece. Now number twenty-seven. <clears throat> we have a five and seven sixteenths inch Adena point. Very nicely made. Uh, it's marked from Ohio and in this uh, cream and pink colored shirt. I wish we had some more. Providence on it, but it does have some really good mineralization on the surface that you can see hopefully in the video here. <clears throat> We'd like to get 995 for this. Again, 
call us at 1-800-466-3836 on any of these pieces that you're seeing today. Next we have, this is lot number 28, it's a nice little 3 and 8 inch Baker's Creek Point. Uh, it is from the Sam Swery collection and it is of a creek stained Dover Chert piece uh, out of western Tennessee. We'd like 275 for this example. Next is item number 29. This is a 5 and 13 16 inch Haw River. It's a kind of a paleo knife style, kind of transitional paleo type. It's in, um, it's in the Perino guides. This particular example was found near the town of Fountain Run along the Barron River in Monroe County, Kentucky. You can see it does have some river staining along with different surface deposits that correspond to a piece coming out of a creek or a river. <clears throat> nice example. We'd like to get $9.95 for it. Okay. Now number 30. Number 30 is a nice 4 and 3 16 inch Graham Cave. Somebody's marked this as a Big Sandy from Sequoia County, Oklahoma. However, the way the notches are done on this piece and the way the base basal concavity is, is this is classic Graham Cave uh, material. Could be Boone or possibly Frisco shirt. Um, we'd like to have $750 for this piece. It does measure 4 and 3 16 again. Okay, lot number 31. It's a 3 and 11 16 inch agate basin out of Crowley County, Colorado. Kind of a pink and cream modeled shirt. Uh, we'd like 1800 for this piece. If you're interested in it, again, give us a call at 1 800 466 3836. And last but not least, we have this small Clovis Point from Harrison County, Indiana, formerly of the John Hill Collection. This is in a translucent fossil chert. Um, it's similar to Boyle, but it's not exactly Boyle. Uh, we'd like to have $995 for this. Okay. Well folks, thank you for watching this presentation video of these pieces in our fall brokerage offerings. And we hope to hear from you soon. Again, that number is on the screen, 1-800-466-3836. You have a good day now.